Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm doing a series on granular synthesis specifically using the grain cloud module in the sampler menu. In this first video I'll show you how to create a simple setup with the grain cloud that gives you control of the speed, the direction, and the pitch of the playback of a sample. All right, so let's build this from scratch. I'll start by adding a grain cloud module, which you can find in the sampler menu. And this has a ton of inputs. It's one of the most complicated modules in Reactor. But fortunately, a lot of the inputs have default values, which means that if we don't hook anything up to those inputs, then a basic default value will be chosen and we'll be taking a lot of advantage of this in this tutorial so that we don't have to wire up all these inputs. So one of the first things we want to do is give the grain cloud some samples to work with. And we can do this by opening up the sampler editor in the upper right hand corner here. And I find the sample editor to be a little clunky, but one way that's pretty useful to use it is you can drag and drop um, a bunch of files at once from a file explorer. So that's one quick way to make a sample map. Or you could just use a pre-made sample map um, using the sample map menu here. And I'm just going to load up the map that comes with Ultraloop because it's pretty great. The amplitude of the grain cloud is going to have a default value of 1 which I really don't want, especially while I'm making this video, because that means it's just going to be constantly spitting noise out at us. So I'm going to control the amplitude with an envelope module. I'll just use a simple ADSR. Um, we can create knobs for each of the inputs and trigger it with the gate. So this means we'll just turn the grain module on whenever a MIDI note is pressed. Uh, there are a lot of other ways we could go about this. If you wanted to make like a groove box out of the grain cloud, for example, maybe you'd want the amplitude to be on whenever the MIDI clock was running. Um, so there's a lot of different things you could do. Next up, I'm going to trigger the G input of the grain cloud with a gate module. And this just tells the grain cloud to start a new grain, which is a short snippet of sound. So whenever we um, get a new MIDI note, this is just making sure that we're starting a new little grain of sound um, immediately. Next, let's set up the select input, which allows you to choose which sample is currently playing. In order to do this, you can simply right click and use the create control command and it'll set you up with a knob with the appropriate parameters. After this, I want to set up the position input of the grain cloud. So as I mentioned, the grain cloud plays back short snippets of sound and the position input is telling you, telling the sampler which part of the sample to grab that sound from. In order to make the demo that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I used a ramp module to control the position input, and I calculated the frequency of the ramp oscillator to be controlled by the length of the sample. And the formula to do this is to divide 1 over the length of the sample in milliseconds and multiply the product by 1000, and that's your frequency. For the amplitude of the ramp oscillator, I'll simply use the length. So this means the oscillator is going to run from 0 to whatever the length of the sample is in milliseconds, and then we'll run 
the output of that directly into the position input of the grain cloud, which is expecting a time in milliseconds as well. Next, I want to use incoming MIDI note data to control the pitch of the sample playback. And each sample in our sample map has what's called a root note. And the sample will play back at its normal pitch, its original pitch, when the pitch is equal to the root value. And next to the root value in the sample editor are the low and high numbers that allow you to select this sample using the select knob. And you'll note they're all the same. So whenever the pitch is equal to the select value, the sample will play back at its original pitch. So what I'm going to do is take the incoming note pitch, subtract 60 from it, and then add that to the select value. So now we'll play back the selected sample at its original pitch whenever the incoming note pitch is equal to 60. And then we'll be able to pitch the sample up or down simply by um, selecting higher or lower MIDI notes. All right, so let's hook this up to our speakers and make sure that everything's working keeping everything polyphonic right now but you could easily get rid of the voice combiners here and make everything monophonic it might be fun later on down the line to be able to uh, stack samples on top of each other at different pitches and speeds and stuff but it's not really necessary for right now so this is a very bare bones setup we have going right now, and we're not taking advantage of a lot of the features that the Grain Cloud has to offer. Um, but we should get something similar to the original sample playing back whenever we press a MIDI note now. Be a little different than the original sample, but it should be pretty close. All right, so everything seems to be working, and we can kind of improve our control over this by giving ourselves a little more control over the ramp oscillator itself. So for example, a lot of people don't realize that oscillators can have a negative frequency, and when they do, they'll run backwards. And so what that means with a ramp oscillator is that instead of ramping upwards from zero to its amplitude value, it'll ramp downwards from its amplitude value down to zero. So I want to add a little reverse button that'll allow us to switch the frequency from positive to negative. And in order to do this, we'll just multiply the frequency by a button and the button will equal negative 1 when it's on, and it'll equal 1 when it's off. All right, so let's wire that up, and then I'll give it a test run. And this can create some pretty interesting effects, because the position that you're taking new grains from can be moving in reverse, but the grains themselves can be playing forward in time. So you can get some pretty cool effects out of this. Next, I want to set up the ramp oscillator so that we start the position from the beginning when we receive a new MIDI note. Right now, it just kind of plays from wherever it happens to be at. So in order to do this, we can simply hit the sync input of the ramp oscillator with a gate module, MIDI gate. And I'll allow the user to control whether or not they want to reset on a new gate by using a router module and this will stop the gates from traveling through when the button is off we'll just rename the button something a little more descriptive like restart and make sure that everything works all right so that's working I also want to add a knob to control the speed of the sample playback. And again, this is controlled by the frequency of the ramp oscillator. 
So in order to control the speed, we can simply multiply the frequency by a value of our choosing. I'll allow it to run from 0 to 2. So if we're multiplying it by 1, we're going to get back our original frequency, our original speed. If we multiply it by 2, we'll double the frequency, which will also double our speed. And if we uh, multiply by 0.5, we'll have our frequency, which will also uh, slow down the sample playback by half. All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram for ReactorTutorials.com. I'll be covering the Grain Cloud module all month long. Um, we'll be enhancing this setup, and I'll show you some other ones as well. Thanks for watching.